Commissioner Stella Kiriakides, I'm very pleased that you're convening this event on women's cancers on this year's World Cancer Day. First, let me say that women's cancers are historically the forgotten ones, except, of course, for breast cancer, and thank goodness for that. My own oncologist tells me that one of the reasons is that because breast cancer also appears in more upscale demographics, women who suffer have had a more powerful and often more public platform to make breast cancer into a public health issue with huge amounts of research and private funding as well. That is the good news. Ovarian cancer, on the other hand, is often called the forgotten cancer, and more ominously, the silent, invisible killer of women. This is what I was diagnosed with last April, but I am pleased to report that I now have my health totally restored, thanks to my incredible surgeon and my oncologist, both women, both specializing in gynecological cancers at Europe's most prestigious cancer center, the Royal Marsden Hospital here in London. I say this because I am among the lucky ones with private insurance and speedy attention, and also by listening to my own body and insisting on investigating my abdominal pain. Sadly, and I would say scandalously, even shockingly, it is still true that too many women are often not taken as seriously as men when they present their cancer concerns to their doctors. Or, in the case of ovarian cancer, it's often immediately misdiagnosed as, for instance, irritable bowel syndrome or a urinary tract infection or bloating, etc. The worst danger is that ovarian cancer is often recognized too late for there to be a cure, leaving only management. My oncologist tells me that 80% of ovarian cancers are caught at the late stage, and even worse during COVID. Now, despite warning signs, my own aunt discovered her ovarian cancer at the age of 79, and by then it was too late, and she died some six years later. Ever since, I've been extremely vigilant, because I had regular transvaginal ultrasounds and I followed my plans to their conclusive diagnosis. I caught my ovarian cancer. I followed my pains, which meant I caught my ovarian cancer very early. And that's what made the difference between my life and death. So my message is that women need to be taken seriously first and foremost, and that early diagnosis is the key. A major awareness campaign on so-called women's cancers should also take place. For instance, too many women think that their cervical smear is an ovarian scan. It is not. These are two different body parts. I'm someone who's taken regular mammograms, all the scans, and everything else that's on offer as soon as I turn 50. Another effective cancer marker, of course, is the blood test, C125, that detects unusual inflammation somewhere in the body, which should be an alarm for further investigation. Again, all these options are not available to every woman, but they must be. And if this event can push women's gynecological health from the back to the front burner of public policy with proper research and funding, then that will be a conference worth having. Thanks for having me and good luck with this important mission.